Hello again and welcome to another Warhammer 40k Imperial Guard video and today guys we are going to be doing a deep dive on the brand new Ashton Militarum unit revealed by Games Workshop, the Field Ordnance Battery. Now just in case you missed it, Games Workshop did a whole plethora of new Ashton Militarum reveals, new kits being redone, brand new units like the one we're going to be looking at today. Overall it was really really good and extremely exciting. If you've missed that, don't worry, I've got a link down in the description below to the Warhammer Community article covering it all. And I have also have a video at the end of this one linking to my deep dive on the new Command Squad. And there's also other videos on my channel where I cover the deep dive for the Cadia Stands boxer and the new Cadian shock troops so there's plenty there for you to get your teeth stuck into so what I like to do with these deep dives is cover any of the known or speculated rules that we've got for the new units and also take a look at the models in detail and see how they compare and contrast to existing kits. Of course, with the Field Ordnance Battery, we've never had anything like this before. It is a brand new unit, so that's really, really cool and I'm really excited for them. Now, I've got to be honest with you guys, these are my favorite favorite models i've always loved gw has shown for the guards so far these are my favorite even better than kazakin who we're going to be taking a look at in a future deep dive video but now let's take a look at these units. And Games Workshop has confirmed that there will be three different options available for your field batteries. A multiple missile launcher, a heavy bombast cannon, and a heavy las cannon. Now, I really like all of these options. But looking at the top, this one sort of model-wise definitely reminds me of a World War II German Nebelwerfer. Now, Games Workshop described this as being able to fire a whole load of shots. And it was speculated that its number of shots was going to be d6 plus 6 strength 5 ap minus 1 1 damage now again that's speculated we don't know for certain what that will be but overall it looks like it's going to be a replacement for the wyvern and the thud gun now, speaking of Wyverns, there is a rumor going around at the moment that the Wyvern is going to be discontinued and this is going to be replacing it. And in fact, that there is going to be a new kit coming out, which is going to be a combination of the Hydra and the Manticore and the Deathstrike and the Wyvern are going to be taken around the back like Old Yeller and going to be going the way of the Dodo. Obviously, that is just a rumor at this point, but it's something to be aware of. And if Games Workshop is showing off something like this, certainly could be an indicator that they're looking to uh, maybe trim down on some weapon options and giving us new unit options. Just something to be aware of. Now, the second option here was described as a mini basilisk, but it was confirmed that it would be able to fire indirect. So this is the Bombard Cannon or Bombast Cannon, and it can apparently fire indirect both of these options can fire indirect now that's really really cool i was really hoping this won't be able to fire indirect fire because this is my favorite just having some sort of classic field gun just looks really really cool so this apparently is going to be a miniature battle and we don't know exactly what the rules are for it, but i would i would wager a guess that this thing is going to be a, a basilisk but minus one so I suspect that its range will be significantly less. Apparently the range for all of them is going to be 48 inches, I should say. Uh, I would suspect that the, the strength of this is going to be 7 or 8. I would suspect that its AP is going to be 2. And I would guess that its damage is going to be, you know, 2 or 3, something like that. I would guess 2 and that the main Basilisk slash Earthshaker goes up to damage 3. That would, that would be my guess on the stats for this thing. And I reckon it fires uh, D3 plus 3 shots. Now, moving on to the last option here, we have got the heavy LAS cannon. Now, they confirmed that this is a big heavy LAS cannon, and in the article, it's described as a heavy overcharged LAS cannon. And in the GW stream, they said you could probably take a guess at its stats. Now, if this is a Basilisk minus one, I'm going to guess this is a LAS cannon plus one. Okay, so I reckon it could be strength nine or ten. I reckon it's going to be AP four and i reckon it's going to do d3 plus three damage i mean it is a big chunky las cannon if at the very least they're going to give it the same stats as the soul shatter las cannons that the new chaos boys got out of all of these models i have to say the bombard cannon is my favorite followed closely by the neb and then i'm kind of meh 
on the heavy las cannon. Don't get me wrong, I actually think it looks really, really cool. And I'm totally up for guard getting more laser technology. But at the end of the day, we love our lasers in the guard, right? But at the end of the day, a las cannon is kind of a las cannon. And it's probably going to fire one shot, which will kind of limit its usefulness on what is more than likely going to be a ballistic skill 4 plus unit. So for me... I think this one is, is still very, very cool, but kind of the least exciting. I think this one is going to be the best all round and it's the coolest. And I just love classic artillery. And I think this one is a bit wacky, but I certainly like the look of it. So if we take a closer look at some of these models now, the first thing to mention is the big stonking huge base size. These have been confirmed to be on 100 mil bases. That is a doozy of a base. Uh, other thing to mention is when we've seen these in the Cadia Stands box set, they've come in pairs, not in triples. So whilst there are three options, I think that when you buy them, they're going to come in a box of two. They might even come in a box of one, like mech guns. Uh, but that you, if they come in a box of two, you might only be able to take these in squads of two as well. If you think about it, that would kind of make sense. If heavy weapon squads can be taken in units of threes, then GW would probably want to limit these or make them stand out a little bit and might limit them to squads of one to two. Uh, I mean, I would love it if they made them squads of three. It means I'd buy more of them. But if they made them squads one to two, that's kind of okay. But when you buy them, I in the Cadia stands box that you're certainly only going to get two rather than three and also I would suspect you're either going to buy these in boxes of one or two. I mean the reason I mention it is it means you might have to get a little bit clever with magnets especially if you're going to be building uh, between the bombard cannon and the heavy las cannon. I mean they've both got the same gun shield design uh, and you know the sitting position looks fairly similar both of you look they've got the hand on a on a sort of a direction wheel there. So I really, really hope that either GW makes it where you can just, you know, push these in. So like, oh, I'll just push the laser cannon in today or I'll push the bombard cannon in today. Or with a little bit of clever magnetization, you'll easily be able to slot in a laser cannon or a bombard cannon. I think these two will be fairly easy to magnetize. I would not say the same for this one. You're going to have to max up magnetizing the whole gun shield and the whole weapon array. It's just going to look very, very different. So for me, I think when I build them, these ones will probably just get glued in place and these ones will probably get magnetized. So taking a look at the models themselves, we've got some really cool sort of features. So we've got some big chunky tires, gun shield here. Now this one does have a wing skull. Again, not an Aquila though, a little bit disappointing. Uh, and you can see here that they have got two rocket tubes that go over the top there. That's pretty cool. Uh, I really like this style of artillery here with the rings cutting it, the holes cutting it. Just reminds me very much of a lot of the artillery that you see in like bot action in World War II. Just makes it feel a lot more modern and realistic. Uh, so yeah, overall, I really like the design of all of the guns i think they've absolutely nailed it interesting they've got a guy in the sitting position in all of them because obviously especially when it comes i mean this one it makes sense you just plug in a new power pack right same with uh, this one you just sort of sit behind and well, where's the missile backwash going to go actually that could be a bit of a problem uh but this one it's gonna be interesting how uh, if the guy is in the sitting position because in realistic artillery you've got to leave a nice gap so that you can ram the new shell in ram the charge in and and then obviously it's got to have recoil and everything. So uh, it's cool, although if there's a guy sitting down here, it might be a little bit less realistic. Now, the style of the artillery, I really like. I really like they've got this pressure pad down here. They've got the really chunky metallic um, arms for the artillery coming off here. They've got the holes uh, drilled in them. It just looks really realistic, like a proper modern house. It reminds me of, is it the, uh, the 777 or the 155 uh, artillery that the Americans have been sending around recently? It really reminds me of that. You've got some sort of, obviously, sort of, sort of dialing computer here, some sort of, you know, artillery computer range could be that's really cool um i do really like the ammo boxes as well you can see that there's a uh, different ammo in this one then into this one it means that you get an empty box and you can put different bits into it that's going to make it really cool for lots of modeling opportunities because you might not use the box on 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 here and that means that you can then use it for something else make some sort of cool little objective marker also seems like the uh lid can be glued on in different places so this one's a little bit further back then when you look at this one which is not quite as far back now, taking a look at the crew, there's some really interesting things to note here. Firstly, these guys don't seem to have the shoulder pads that the regular line infantry have. They've actually got 
more exposed sleeves and also you can see they have got elbow patches as well as knee patches not sure if that's something we have seen in the other guardsman squads we've also got gloves on each of the individual men that we can see here including the ones manning the weapons as well and we've also got a what looks like original pattern of Kane armor look we've got aquilas on chests finally you can see them throughout so it definitely feels like these artillery crew are wearing different uniforms to your standard Cadian guardsmen. We've also got a variety of different head designs. So we've got a guy here with, with it sort of looking quite stern. He has what looks like a watch in his hand as well, ready to lower his fist in order to launch the rockets. That looks really cool. So yeah, guy's got a las gun slung over his shoulder here. This guy's got the classic heavy weapon teams with goggles look, although again, the uh, ear defenders here do look a little bit different. This style of helmet definitely looks different to the standard Cadian Tridome. This definitely looks like some more uh, sort of ear protection is going on here, which is cool. Uh, we've also got a guy with a face covering and a goggles and everything that looks really cool there. And a guy covering his ears. Uh, we've got a man shouting. You know, so it's a, it's a different head there because look, that guy's got a cap, but he's not shouting. This guy has a cap, but he is shouting. Pointy hand, always good to be able to do the uh, combat point. Uh, as ability to stand with on a top of a tactical uh, case is good. Not a tactical rock in this ta case. It's a uh, it's a tactical ammo box. Uh, and then sort of coming down here, we've got a uh, some binoculars on the front, some man mag oculars, I imagine they're called, uh, and the rate or range finders. Uh, and again, we've got sort of got the classic pointing and you know listening into his earpiece design there. Another thing to mention is you've got these patches on the shoulders as well. So you can see that there's an embossed uh, patch that's similar to how the old metal Armageddon Steel Legion models used to look. So you've got like an embossed little patch there. And you can actually see here he's got sergeant stripes on his shoulder. Now we haven't actually seen sergeant stripes on some of the other KD models. We've seen them on the ones with, on the command squad where they've got the shoulder pads with the with the shoulder pad coverings. But these are your more classic sergeant uh, stripes that we've got here but instead of them on, on the current sergeant models on the current Cadian kits not the new ones the current ones the ones that are like the old kit with the upgrade sprue uh, the sergeant chevrons are way down here whereas they've offered which is which is a bit of a silly place to have them really so it's not you don't really see them there in real life uh, but GW sort of corrected that mistake and they've put them up here now instead Another thing to mention is you can see on a lot of these uniforms, they've got little ammo pouches and stuff on their shoulders. Again, that's something you don't see on the current Cadian sprue or the new Cadian sprue even. And also you can see this guy has a las gun that's slung and it seems to be sort of pointing downwards into the mud. Hopefully he doesn't get loads of mud up his bow. But again, lots of modeling opportunities. I bet you could get that slung las gun and put it in some of your command squads or your infantry squads. Now, in terms of crew weapons, of course, we've, we tend to see someone who's got a LAS gun and someone who's got a LAS pistol, whether they'll be able to fire those or not, or if they're purely for um, decoration, we'll have to see. Obviously, under the current rules for your heavy weapon teams, you can fire both the heavy weapon and the LAS gun on the spare dude. But these guys obviously might have their hands full trying to man this big artillery piece. It's not like a normal heavy weapon. Is it? It's a bit bigger than that. Also sort of mention the difference between these guys and the classic heavy weapon teams is they do have three crew. That's much more reminiscent of your Forge World artillery, which tend to have between three and five crew per gun. Now, speaking of Forge World artillery, I would bet that there is a strong possibility that these models are intended to replace the ones that you can buy from Forge World. I think that this multiple rocket launch that has been described as firing a load of shots is very much going to be replacing the thud gun slash quad gun. We don't know for certain. We just, we, we don't know, but that would be my guess. It may be Forgewood will keep the old ones. We don't know, uh, but I would suspect this is going to replace it. And I would suspect that this is intended to replace the classic heavy mortar. Now, that would be a shame. I don't like GW replacing things. I'd rather they just kept both. I mean, we've seen it with smaller game companies like Warlord Games. They can keep massive ranges of small models just be, just to help satisfy the fans, essentially. It would be nice if GW could do something similar. Um, I, on the other hand, I, I massively prefer these over the forged ones. Massively. I mean, I actually am not a big fan of the look of the Heavy Mortar, whereas I am a big fan of 
of the look of this thing. And again, I'm not a massive fan of the look of the Quad Launch, which is the reason I don't own either of those models. Um, but I am a big fan of the Nebelwerfer in space. Um, overall, if GW was to replace the Ford Wood options, I personally would have no issue if someone took their current heavy mortar, stuck at 100mm base and put the crew on it. That would be fine. Okay, that would be absolutely fine. And I think that that is definitely an option that's open. If you've got a thud gun, Put it, you know, you could definitely proxy it as one of these. If you've got a heavy mortar, you could definitely proxy it as one of these. But that covers everything that we've got time for today. I hope you've enjoyed today's episode. If you have, please consider giving it a like. And if you want to make sure you don't miss any more deep dives, then subscribe to the channel to never miss an episode. Let me know what you think down in the comment section below. Is there anything that you think that I've missed? I mean, I really like this small detail here where you've got a guy with a five on the gun and a five on the on the crew member that's really cool is there anything else that you think that i've missed let me know down in the comment section below if you spotted any details that i haven't mentioned so far also of course let me know what your favorite option is here do you like the lance cannon the field gun or the multiple rocket launcher put that down in the comment section below i'd be really interested to see what you guys are thinking and how many of these are you planning on picking up you're going to get three full batteries of them. If there's like two or three of them, you're going to get pick up like six to nine of these bad boys. You're going to be picking up nine las cannons, nine field guns, nine Neville Werfers. Let me know what your thoughts are. How excited, how hyped are you for the new field battery? Put it down in the old comment section. Now, if you've really enjoyed today's video and you want to go the extra mile when it comes to supporting my channel, then please consider becoming a channel member or Patreon supporter. It makes a huge difference. In fact, thanks to the generous support of my channel members and patrons, I'm now able to do MG full time, which just means I'm able to do more of these deep dive videos, take my time over them and really get into the nitty gritty and fine detail. So if you want to see more stuff like that, please consider signing up to either my Patreon or my channel. And I just want to take a moment now to say a big thank you to all of the latest channel members. So thank you, Krug Dog, Zeal, David Hamlet, Doc Dragon, The Traitor Guardsman, Aomir, Bryn, John, Josh, Y Clutch Games, Funny Soup, Devin Johnson, Robert Miles, Alex Holt, Code 72, Far Beyond the Stars, Werewolf, Sinclair Haddo, David Lynn, Arlie 803, Sylvester of Terror, Dirty Mike and the Boys, Roland Vanderbog, Jaden Rugg, Skylar Nagel, Nico Atherius, John Sinclair, Kevin Farrell, Mr. Bullshark, Warmaster Will, and Riddy T. Mead. Thank you guys for all of your support. Thank you for doing your part. I also want to do a shout out for the latest Patreon support as well. So a massive thank you to TechGuy122, Hound the Red, Bradley J, Christopher Scott, Moon Prune, and 700 Black Templar. Thank you for your ongoing Patreon support. Now, last but certainly not least, I want to say a huge thank you to all of my top tier Patreon supporters. These are the War Masters. These are the people that have truly gone above and beyond the call of duty when it comes to supporting my channel, and I am eternally grateful to them. So a massive thank you to Navy Veteran, Philip French, Ross Miller, Tequal, Alex Dengal, John Stubbs, Nicholas Walsh, Swordfish Trombone, Diesel Fox, Tom Sutton, and Sly Varney. Massive thank you to all of you guys. Your ongoing support just makes a huge, huge difference. I hope you've all enjoyed today's video. Thank you for watching, and as always, I'll see you guys next time.